Hey, what? what you gonna do, boy? I'm punching you. Do it then, boy. And I know what that means. I know what that feels like. And I'm gonna f your wife. They you gonna have to come hard. You gonna knock me down. What happened between you and Tlaib on the field early in the game? I don't know. You gonna ask him because he didn't finish the game. Ice up, son. Ice up. These are NFL players who hate each other. And Patrick Mahomes' beef with another NFL star not only led to heated trash talk, it led to Mahomes getting trolled by the entire world. The situation isn't even a surprise, since Mahomes already admitted that him and his squad have some history with the Raiders. Raiders week is the one rivalry in this league that I feel like is like a college rivalry. You have that little bit of hatred towards that team and you can feel the energy, it's just different. But Mahomes wasn't only feuding with the team in general, he had a personal rivalry with one of their best players. A crazy looking white boy who's loaded in tats, smokes backwards on live TV, and even bumps Chief Keefe in their team's locker room. This is Max Crosby, and not only does he hate Mahomes right back, when they went up against each other in a matchup, the whole world began realizing things between them were personal. Right from the start of the game, Max and the Raiders were kicking the Chiefs ass, like they literally went up 17-0. So the Raiders were feeling themselves at this point, especially Max. That's why he not only sacked Mahomes and did a little dancey dance, he started purposely messing with Mahomes just to get under his skin. Yeah, during this game, uh, I was messing with him a little bit, pushing him on the shoulder, like after the, you know, after the ball was gone, just trying to mess with him to see how he would react. And he started getting irritated. Come on, man, I understand you touching me, but you don't punch me, bro. At that point, Mahomes was pissed, and after trying to make a comeback by throwing a touchdown, Mahomes ran up to Max and escalated the beef. Here all day! I'm here all day! In the moment, this got Mahomes fired up. He instantly lit up the scoreboard with one, two, three more touchdowns to stun the Raiders, and even taunted Max and his squad by fingering them with how many touchdowns he threw that day. Four. This entire situation had the rivalry, beef, whatever you want to call it between Mahomes and Max, making headlines everywhere. But the funniest part of all of this to fans was Mahomes' voice during the trash talking. I'm here! I'm here! It not only got him clowned by fans saying he sounded like Kermit the Frog, which I can kind of hear. I've, I've heard it since I was in like seventh grade. Even his own teammate was mocking Mahomes' voice during interviews. I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> See, Debo's beef with fashion diva Cam Newton just a little sauce, just a little drip. Began when the dude was on a podcast talking reckless about Debo's quarterback, Brock Purdy. But Brock, let's, they're not winning because of him. This may ruffle a lot of feathers, but it's honest. Brock, Purdy, these are game managers. They're, they're not difference makers. Listen, motherfucker. I don't give a damn what you do. You don't have to score every time. You just don't have to throw a pick every time either. And from the looks of it, he wasn't really lying about the dude being overhyped, because during Purdy's next matchup, he had the worst game of his career by throwing not one, and is not two, this one is into the air. not even three, On the play, this is pick. but four interceptions, which also led to him getting smacked. And Cam was definitely watching. Like, that's why he tweeted emojis that, to me, seemed like he was trying to tell the world, uh, Told you, fans just thought Cam was being a washed up jealous hater though, so he started being criticized by everybody. In the year of 2023, where it's all about NFL backups, where is Cam? Not on an NFL roster, right? He sounds like the people literally tweeting at me from their basement, like, get back in the kit. Like, it's like, you are at home. Cam, you know more football than that, yes. right? Come on, Cam, Brock Purdy is the complete opposite of a game manager to me. Now, all right, it wasn't just a random woman or someone old enough to be Cam's grandpa who was talking either. Once Debo, AKA Purdy's teammate, heard all of this, he called Cam out on live TV. First of all, Cam Noon stopped texting my phone, bro. He was a fan like two weeks ago. Like, that's mad crazy. Like, you wanted me on your podcast after talking about my quarterback, which is funny to me. And even though Debo kind of just subtly threw that shade, Cam called Cap on all that and tried to expose them even harder. Debo, my guy. You must stop the cap, bro. I mean, like, you said something like, Cam, stop calling my phone. I'm like, well, I got your number. And if I do, put it out there for the people to see. I want the receipt. So after saying all that, it seemed like things were really heating up. And Debo tried proving that he was the one being real by dropping screenshots of the text that Cam was sending him. The convo started by saying, yo, Debo, it's Cam. I'm trying to have you on the pod in the next few weeks. Hit me back. Then Debo responded, I don't know who this is. So yeah, Cam introduced himself, but after he didn't get a response back from Debo, dude went on a rant like crazy saying, F you Debo, going silent now? Yeah, I ate little bruh. 
Lose my number, we finna have a prob. Going on K Adam's show and talking about me? Wouldn't expect less, little bro. Focus on yourself, pup. Now, all right, I can't even lie. The weird font or whatever Cam was using had me thinking I had dyslexia and couldn't read or something. But quickly looking at his Twitter, you could see he always types like that, so everyone believed the texts were real. Until leaked messages from a high school group chat randomly came out, where one kid said he managed to get Debo's number and texted him pretending to be Cam. <laughs> All these boys were geeked up because their prank went viral. Fans couldn't believe Debo got trolled so hard. They were calling him an idiot, saying he was goofy, when he even made up a new word and said he got camfished. So regardless of the texts were even from Cam, I'm sure Debo's still hating on dude for getting him involved in this mess. The situation was so embarrassing that Debo deleted all the screenshots and just when everyone thought the pranking was over, the same kids posted a video where they called Debo and got him to answer. Yeah, probably it's been a minute. I was hoping to uh, connect with you, bro. I mean, we got some boys that look out to you, look up to you, you know what I mean? Uh -huh. What's going on? Nothing, bro. I mean, I was just hoping to talk. I mean, I don't know if you're busy right now, but I mean, I was just honestly calling to, uh, you know, whatever you got for the... What but phone calls, texts, and some interviews, that's one thing. DK Metcalf proved that he hated an NFL legend by using his ass cheeks. Now, all right, before things got that dark, the hate must have been brewing for a while after DK noticed how much Shannon Sharp was allowed to critique players all over TV. Usually Shannon gets away with saying wild things, but as soon as he mentioned DK, it sparked beef. Everything started when DK's squad was in a game against the Steelers who were looking to make a last minute comeback. And down three with only 30 seconds left, at first he made this crazy catch to even keep his team's chances alive. But then only a few plays later, he did something that cost his team the win. Instead of going out of bounds to stop the clock, DK got greedy trying to score the game winning touchdown and fumbled the ball, which kept the time moving till there were only a few seconds left. So DK's stupid mistake not only killed his team's chances to win, it forced him to settle for a field goal, and eventually, they lost. So after all of that, I could tell Shannon was off the henny cause he didn't have any filter when he hopped on Twitter. He criticized DK saying, what was DK thinking? Why try to play hero ball in that situation? Which kinda seemed like an innocent criticism. But it was just the beginning of their feud cause DK's first response was quoting the tweet and saying, stop questioning me little boy. Now, this was hilarious cause Shannon's literally a legendary 6 foot 2, 220 pound monster. He definitely ain't a little boy, he looks like this. But DK being a 6'4", 230 pound beast himself with less than 2% body fat, I mean, just look at this dude. He kinda has the credentials to call people little, so I let it slide. Shannon wasn't having any of that though. He tweeted back saying, nothing to question. That was a dumbass play and your pride won't let you admit it. You can't question anything I've done. Pray your resume will be as complete as mine. Pray, enjoy the rest of your day. And after all of that, honestly, DK was in fact gonna enjoy his day, but not without clapping back a final time saying, from the looks of it, I can wipe my ass with your resume. Continue to gossip you washed up wannabe, damn. And just thinking about it, DK would be wiping with some pretty legendary toilet paper. Like one of Shannon's former teams actually tweeted it out saying, heard someone was looking for Shannon's resume. And the tweet showed off how Shannon won three Super Bowls, made eight Pro Bowl teams, has the longest touchdown catch in playoff history, and is literally a Hall of Famer. So this made me Google what DK's resume was, and it's pretty much nothing. So maybe he's the one who's ass cheeks? Either way, their hate for each other ain't gonna go away anytime soon. But being hated by a single player is nothing compared to the NFL star who's hated by an entire city just cause he trolled them with a t-shirt. Yeah, and before I get to that, it's Super Bowl time, baby! So I know we're all more hyped for football than we've been all year. But what I'm even more excited for is how me and my boys at FanDuel teamed up to get you guys in on the football action. If you're anything like me, my favorite thing about Super Bowl Sunday is placing some super bets, even though the commercials are hilarious. <laughs> and not only is FanDuel the best spot to play Super Bowl 58 bets, they've got us covered in a way that's gonna end all our seasons with a W or two, or three or four. Cause for any new customers that post a $5 bet on anything and it wins, they're giving out free $200 in bonus bets to everybody. It's as easy as betting on which team will win, what players will score a touchdown, how many points will be scored, or so much more. And to make it even easier, all you gotta do is head over to fanduel.com slash fieldflicks. Then if you sign up, place a $5 bet or more and it wins, you'll get your free $200 in bonus bets. Once again, that's fanduel.com slash fieldflix, which is also the link in my description. And a big shout out to FanDuel, an official sportsbook partner of the NFL, for sponsoring this video. Let's get some wins, boys. But anyways, back to the time George Kittle's t-shirt started a citywide riot. 
It's been known that the 49ers have been in a rivalry for decades with the Dallas Cowboys. And nowadays, it's no different, because Kittle's always making crazy plays against them and helping his squad beat them over and over again. But for Kittle, dubbing them on the field wasn't enough humiliation. He planned something for his next game that would turn things into real hate, with not only the Cowboys players, their fans, and the entire city of Dallas. Kittle was inspired by another legendary troll, 49er legend Gary Plummer, a man who not only used to dominate the Cowboys himself in the 90s, there was a time he humiliated Dallas when he wore something under his jersey during a playoff game against them that was disrespectful and iconic. What he wore that day was something that Kittle thought would be hilarious to revive, so he secretly wore it under his jersey during their next matchup. And while Kittle went off scoring three touchdowns, literally having the best game of his career, which I already thought was humiliation, Kittle eventually whipped out something controversial. Kittle's undershirt was so inappropriate that the NFL wouldn't even post clips of it. I literally had to show this fans video. It said F Dallas, and Kittle eventually posted on Instagram for the whole world to see. Now, I'm not gonna act like I didn't comment or even go buy a shirt myself, but Cowboys players instantly felt the hate, so one of their stars, Micah Parsons, even hopped on a podcast to start hating on Kittle right back. You know, George Kittle had three touchdowns on us, and he posted this thing to IG. He said, F Dallas. I just feel like he's making it more, way more personal than it had to be. But I'm going to say this, laugh now, cry later. We got something for that. But even after he said all of that, it wasn't just the players that felt disrespected or tried acting hard either. Fans from all over Dallas started hating on Kittle. Like, one said that he deserves at least a one-game suspension, maybe two. Others said it should be six to nine games. One even felt that Kittle was only doing that to go mainstream, so he called him the dollar store Travis Kelsey, and someone flat out called Kittle garbage. But even though it seemed like the whole city was against him, Kittle wasn't worried about anybody who felt disrespected by his shirt. After uh, a rush touchdown, not even your touchdown, you went over to the crowd and you displayed your undershirt. Now, is that undershirt every game or? I think that was just on my loop, man. I put it on, you know, just wearing a t-shirt the <laughs> game. I don't know how that got on there. Uh, you know, I might've been mildly inspired by our guy, Gary Plummer, who wore that in, uh, I'm pretty sure it was the 94 NFC Championship game versus Dallas. So it just, there's some things that uh, that need to be worn for the franchise. And I just, you know, I think it's just coincidence that I just happened to appear on my chest on uh, Sunday Night Football. Okay. So yeah, after Kittle said all of that, the situation became such a big topic that the No Fun League, I mean NFL, didn't want him stirring up any more problems with other teams moving forward. So they literally fined him $13,000. Kinda seems like the most expensive shirt I've ever heard of, but no amount of fine could have ended the hate between these next players. Cause Tom Brady's hate for another NFL legend fueled him to win a Super Bowl. I was sitting there thinking, you're sticking with that mother and I know what that means, I know what that feels like, and I'm gonna go f you up because of that. It's all because Brady's contract with the Patriots was about to be over, teams were reaching out to him, and one organization made him feel like they were actually gonna sign him the Dolphins, until at the very last second they backed out, and they told Brady they wanted someone else starting instead. This shocked Brady's ego, cause not only did he obviously feel like he was still the GOAT, and much better than their guy, Brady got heated just talking about the dude. I was sitting there thinking, you're sticking with that mother <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> Tom probably had no desire to go to that team, but now it's like, why don't you want me? Absolutely. Like, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Sure. When I look back, I'm like, there's no fucking way I would've went to that team. <laughs> but they said they didn't want me, and I know what that means. I know what that feels like, and I'm gonna f you up because of that. Now, even though Brady wasn't name dropping, just taking a look at the Dolphins' depth chart of that year, it shows you that the man he was hating on was Ryan Fitzpatrick. This eventually got out into everybody's surprise. Not only did Ryan himself confirm it, he also exposed that he hated Brady for reasons that nobody knew about. You probably went through a, a couple times in the last year and a half or so when people were trying to figure out, are you the mother that Tom Brady was talking about? Mm. Yeah. That's yeah. the most recent be me. No. You think it was you? Yeah. I feel like Brady respects you. No, zero respect. Really? Would never shake my hand. Really? Uh, Wait. I mean, I've told this story before, but he just pisses me off because kicking our ass every single year, they're beating us, and we finally in 2011 knocked him off. It was right at the beginning of the season. We had this like great start. He threw five interceptions in the game. It was just wonderful to see every single one of them. It was like <laughs> wonderful to see and run straight off. Like no handshake, no, you know, quarterback, middle of the field, where are the cameras, okay, yeah. hey, stay healthy, buddy, you know. It bothered me so much because there was no respect there. Yeah. And ended up in New York with the Jets and with Miami 
beating him. The last one was especially sweet because it was they needed to beat us to get home field advantage, and we go and we score at the end of the game and beat them. And then Kansas City gets home field and mm-hmm. they win the Super Did Bowl. Did he shake year. your hand after that one? Yeah, I think okay. so. Okay. Now, okay. Even though Ryan tried making it seem like he deserved to be respected, because in his eyes he got the best of Brady in their matchups, the history book showed the exact opposite. The facts prove that Ryan bounced around to nine different teams during his entire career, and his all-time record against Brady was three. In 11. <laughs> this dude is ass. As embarrassing as that was, though, Ryan talking crazy actually fueled Brady to join a team that Ryan used to play for, the Buccaneers, then try to win him a Super Bowl, something Ryan never got close to achieving. And after Brady beat legend after legend after legend in the playoffs till he eventually held up his record breaking seven championship trophy. <clears throat> AKA something nobody ever did before. You'd think Ryan would have given Brady his props and gotten over their beef. But instead, Brady was clearly living in dude's head rent free, and it was obvious when Ryan got asked who the GOAT was and denied it being Brady. <laughs> dude's delusional for that. And that's why Brady clowned him one final time. Ryan Fitzpatrick. Oh God, not this again. And I love Ryan, but somehow he's got it out for me. And that's why I actually talked to Ryan Griffin, who's one of our quarterbacks. He said, Ryan's all, always all over you. I don't know why. So I don't know why Ryan is. Maybe Ryan and I need to have a talk. Ryan's a hell of a guy too. And I've competed against him. I mean, he's a Harvard guy. Now he looks like he's part homeless. And now he's on TV doing what my future job's going to be. So I think Ryan's got a good thing going. I'm not sure why he needs to, you know, think that I'm after him or something like that. <laughs> Just look at Brady, man. Out here clowning players entire lives, but referees ruined the NFL's entire season. Like, just look at this. They were out of control this year, man. They gave teams free points, and honestly, they lost me so much money. Uh, can you just click this for me? Uh, I need some spare change, man. I, I just want enough to eat today, all right? Just, just please, man. Please, click it. <laughs>